earlier this month, the NFEA called for a vote of no confidence in the superintendent of schools, Dr. Alicia Roy. We, the citizens of New Fairfield, are presenting this petition as a collective vote of no confidence in Dr. Alicia Roy. Teachers and parents have been coming to board meetings for months now, some years. We have provided the board with specific issues regarding the performance of the superintendent of schools. Yet we have seen little to no response from the board. That they're afraid to speak up because they're afraid their children or the child is going to be retaliated against. Really concerned about the safety of students. Not once has Dr. Roy accepted any responsibility for the problems she has created in this district. I'm absolutely appalled um, that it was able to get to this extreme of a point. I said enough is enough. So although she may listen, she does not hear. This is a broken and callous system. It is causing widespread emotional and psychological damage. I'm appalled by the fact that there's been no communication to the students regarding potential and even current changes that are happening in my own education as well as other students' educations in here throughout this town. Teacher morale is all but non-existent. People have given up. I can tell that my teachers are restricted. I can tell that there's very poor morale throughout this town. They have lost all trust in the superintendent. I should not, nor should any parent, have to file, have to hire an attorney to compel this district to follow basic laws. Now to the vote. We have 227 teachers in this district. 160 teachers voted no confidence in the superintendent of schools. I have 374 signatures. 42 teachers did not vote. 160 teachers are 70% of our staff. It still amazes me the level of fear that exists in the staff where we have teachers that were afraid to put an anonymous ballot into a shoebox. Everything I've seen uh, is incredibly disorganized. Well, the teachers are not happy, the community's not happy, they've spoken out, and yet nothing has been done. This has been going on for over a year now. They're frustrated. They, they voice their concerns, the board tells them they're listening, yet nothing's been done. I think we have a dysfunctional board of education, and that leads to a dysfunctional superintendent, someone who doesn't pick up on, on interpersonal cues. Um, Dr. Roy is a bully. She has no people skills and she's not really listening to what people are saying. Like she's not trying to make effort to change anything in the district. You know, I asked questions and nobody was answering the questions I was asking. I said something is wrong here. Um, and it seems as I kept going to BOE meetings, at every meeting something was a little bit wrong. But when you start looking at the whole picture and you realize that the, the incidents are not isolated to one or two families and they're not isolated to even one population. This isn't isolated just to special ed parents. It becomes very concerning that there are issues throughout the district that aren't being addressed. You're going to be running a school system that you need to be able to negotiate between parents, teachers, and students, not from the top down like a dictator, but collaboratively. She lacks empathy. I mean, I, I look at what the teacher said, and what the teacher said really reeks of a lack of empathy. I listen to what the special ed parents have said. Again, I see empathy as an issue. The, when you see a lack of empathy as a consistent behavior, it's kind of troublesome. I don't think she has the skill set, and I don't think this BOE has the skill set. 
I can see why people have no confidence in her. They don't believe in her leadership. They don't believe in, in her style. It, you start talking and looking at all the problems in the district, and a lot of it comes down to the personality of the leader in the, in the district. Do you think this administration has done its job in protecting students in the school environment? Not at all. Do you think uh, Dr. Roy and the New Fairfield Public Schools administration has provided a, a safe school environment for students and teachers? No, absolutely not. I don't. Do you feel Dr. Roy has provided students of this district with a safe school environment? And I think that she herself probably doesn't because in my direct experience when I brought issues like this to her, she didn't. Um, when you have students saying they're afraid, these are problems. Quite frankly, really concerned about the safety of students. For without a safe learning environment, their education is not possible. They must have the empathy for the families of students who have been victimized and protect them from being further victimized. Um, I mean, I just heard about this lawsuit today, and quite frankly, I'm absolutely appalled um, that it was able to get to this extreme of a point. We went to Dr. Baldelli, or Mrs. Baldelli, and she basically kind of just blew it all off. She didn't really take a lot of it seriously. And so she basically, she only showed them a video, and then there were no other consequences after that. Like, that was it. They watched a, like, 10-minute video, and then they left. There was no actual repercussions for what they were doing. Um, as one of the first outwardly gay people in New Fairfield High School for my age bracket and demographic, um, I was bullied constantly, as was my uh, boyfriend at the time. Interestingly enough, you know, her response, Alicia Roy's response, was always, well, maybe you should tone it down because you're asking for it. Um, and that's not an acceptable response and misses the point of the past 10 years of, you know, educational uh, professional development. So I was afraid if I was going to get any repercussions for going to a principal. So I, if proper code of protocol was followed, there would have been some sort of repercussion and I would have felt a little bit more safer knowing that something had happened. Um, that's not acceptable. When a child is coming to you um, and speaking to you about homophobia in the classroom and being constantly called a faggot or, uh, you know, is being racially uh, uh, targeted for, you know, there were students of color, a few, um, when I was matriculated in Fairfield while she was the principal. Uh, that didn't go addressed, and it was just allowed to continue, and basically it was all a matter of victim blaming in a giant circle. Uh, were you ever given the opportunity to file a harassment complaint or a no, Title IX complaint? never. The reason that all of these parents are upset is I am one of them who has personally experienced sitting in a PPT meeting where an administrator gave a complete, made a statement that was a complete contradiction to state and federal law. Special needs children in New Fairfield with behavioral health issues are contained in isolation, restrained often by staff, and frequently traumatized in environments where they should feel safe by personnel that they should be able to trust and rely upon. I should not, nor should any parent, have to file, have to hire an attorney to compel this district to follow basic laws. This is a broken and callous system. It is causing widespread emotional and psychological damage. I think that we just need to redo the special ed program. There's nothing being done for some of these students. How many lawsuits against special ed? 27 or 28 lawsuits or legal actions have been taken against the special ed program when the average district our side maybe gets maybe a handful of, of these sort of actions. There was a bad hire, let's call it a bad hire for a PPS director. And after facts were brought to her attention, instead of doing an investigation, or maybe doing an investigation and not a thorough one, once those facts were brought to light before the contract was up, um, or as it was up for renewal, 
Dr. Roy decided to renew that contract, and I think that was a really poor decision. The special ed problems began with services that weren't provided as dictated by the IEP. So that's the first flag, and it's, it would be really hard to evaluate progress if even the services that the school staff determined were necessary were not being implemented. Um, in other cases, data was given or manipulated in such a way that made it look like a child was making progress and they weren't, or teachers were being told to, to not speak out at, at certain meetings, at the PPT meeting. The only option at that point is for a parent to get an attorney or file a state complaint and um, and move forward. And a lot of people don't have the means to do that. And I think to a certain extent that the school district does count on, count on that. And I think that's really deplorable for the the students who are who are now losing services and are now losing what should be an appropriate education. That there were issues regarding special education with your brother. Uh, do you mind explaining those and uh, the, the process by which yeah. it happened? This her a seventh grade ELE teacher said that he was reading at a fifth grade level, and that's in seventh grade. Like he's two years behind in reading. Then um, they said he was fine; nothing was wrong. We got an advocate, demanded more testing. They said no. So then we got demanded independent testing, and it confirmed that he was, in fact, very, like, he was dyslexic. So he was reading at a fourth grade level when he was going into eighth grade. He got the services he needed in eighth grade, and he made honor roll all three trimesters, where, he, as of years before, he was failing. So there was a, as soon as he got the services, he was perfect, he was fine. Um, but the only reason he got those services because was because, because you were going to sue, correct? We pushed, we thought about lawyers, we got the advocate. I can tell that my teachers are restricted. I can tell that there's very poor morale throughout this town. Dr. Roy wanted to combine administration of the high school and the middle school, even after the teachers said they did not want that. The teachers cannot function. They cannot do what they were hired to do. I know from teachers that I know that it's very much on my way or the highway. I think this has been confirmed by Keith Conway and some of the comments that he's made. And I think it shows up. It shows up in teacher morale. When you have people, teachers walking into public meetings saying they're afraid. They don't want to teach here. We have teachers uh, leaving. There are so many open positions right now. Who's going to fill those positions? Nobody wants to come to a district where over 70% of their teachers have voted no confidence in their superintendent. I think it comes from the top down and people feel the weight of her leadership. Dealing with people under her is not a strong suit. And that's a huge, huge skill you need in this position. And earlier this year, we saw an overwhelming majority, about 70% of teachers vote no confidence in Superintendent Dr. Alicia Roy. Have you ever seen a majority vote of no confidence uh, as NFEA president? No, we've never, uh, in my tenure as president, there's never been a vote of no confidence. Uh, and that covers uh, three or four superintendents. And prior to that, I was vice president for about nine, ten years. There was never uh, a vote taken of no confidence uh, in the past. There have been issues with uh, superintendents, but I'd have to say they were isolated to certain areas and never, uh, never to the extent that they are now where it impacts all areas uh, across the board. Uh, how would you describe teacher morale currently? Teacher morale is probably the lowest I've ever seen it in my 30 years in the district. I've been uh, teaching there for 30 years, involved with the union for 20. It's never been as widespread uh, morale issues as it is now. In the past, we've had issues at buildings that were localized to certain administrators, but now the morale is pervasive from 
kindergarten up to up to 12th grade. During public comment, you mentioned uh, no teacher voice multiple times. Can you explain a few instances in which Dr. Roy did not allow teachers to have input? Yeah, I think there's there's been very little input as far as any of the programs that were initiated. Everything from the one-to-one -one computing initiatives uh, to curriculum uh, to professional development. We have a, a professional development committee that met uh, two times this year uh, that did virtually no work on uh, professional development and very little uh, work on the evaluation document other than rubber stamps and changes made by administrators. So everything from curriculum uh, to your, uh, your professional development and initiatives, uh, there's been a lack of uh, teachers at the table. 42 teachers did not vote uh, according to your vote. Uh, even though it was anonymous, do you think perhaps uh, them not voting is the formulaic result of a climate of fear and intimidation that currently exists between Roy and the teachers? Yeah, I, I think you're definitely on target with that. There is a climate of uh, fear. People are afraid of uh, retaliation. And I spoke to several teachers personally who were uh, afraid to fill out the ballot even though it was anonymous. And then in reviewing the list, I noticed that there were a number of non-tenured teachers that I didn't even approach because clearly they're afraid that uh, there would be retaliation somehow or somehow they would find out how, uh, how they voted. And I'm appalled by the fact that there's been no communication to the students regarding potential and even current changes that are happening in my own education as well as other students' educations in here throughout this town. We don't really have consistency year to year, and unfortunately, we're not able to perform our best because the students or the teachers aren't able to teach their best. Well, I can only speak on what my daughter and her friends talk about, and they're just not happy because they feel there's too much emphasis put on standardized testing. They just don't feel they're the focus anymore, and they're just they're just not happy. They a lot of them have said if it wasn't for sports and their friends, they would go to another school. When I opted out of the Smarter Balance test, I was told I was doing disservices to my community, and it's just testing overruled success, kinda. The results show off that there's a problem in the district. S scores are falling. There's no way to deny that they're falling. Where in our district reference groups do, it, do, do our scores currently fall? I believe we are at the bottom. I mean, you can literally look at every, you know, we use the data and they say it's no good. They take that same data and they're plugging it into data tables for each student. Each student has that same exact data on their own data table. So why, when we use the data, it's bad, and when they use the data, it's good? I don't know, but you can literally see on almost every table, it goes, the last six years, the lines go straight down. The school district is falling. The, the performance of the school district is falling, and I, I think it's really obvious if you look at the scores. What I'm asking for, and I've already done the research, I've already dug in, you know, almost half the kids that are taking AP classes are failing. O over half the kids in the district are below meets requirements in math, according to state testing. These are horrible results. These are just horrendous results. There are, we're our lowest in our DRG. Our test scores are plummeting, especially since they instituted the one-to-one -one computing. Uh, according to what I was hearing at the meetings, it's going to take between three and five years to implement the math curriculum they just put in place. If that's true, um, you have a whole cohort of kids that are going to suffer as a result. So if you don't admit to a problem, you're not going to solve it. If you don't have the hard facts in front of you, unvetted, uh, well vetted facts in front of you, you're not going to you're not going to address the issues at hand. And I think we need to start having reality based conversations with ourselves. And it's just not happening. We're just failing on top of failure right now. Six years ago, I remember going to meetings and no one was there, and they'd be like, "People need to start coming to these meetings." This year has been consistently full meetings, same questions, no answers, 
and people are extremely, extremely frustrated. People are done. When I read that article and she said that she felt bullied and it was the first time that she had thought about bullying, if you've been an administrator for over a decade and this is the first time you thought about bullying only because it affected you, you are not the type of person that should be leading a school system. You shouldn't even be driving a bus. Well, I think the word bully or cranks, those are unfortunate characterizations that have happened. I'm really, I'm opinionated and I'm blunt. And I'll, I'll speak my mind and the flip side is I'll listen to other people as they speak their mind. So a bully is someone that only cares about their point of view. We're asking the same things, we're, we're all seeing the same things, um, we're much more organized than we were in the past, and we're in the same place. So that's extremely, extremely frustrating, and that comes out in public comment. They, they, all they say is, well, you know, people have gotten, you know, randy at public comment during meetings. Why? Why? Ask yourself. We're doing this, we're not doing this for fun. I don't want to come out every second Thursday. People don't want to do this. But we're seeing no results and we're seeing we're not being given a choice but to keep attending and keep being the loud voice. Why do you think the board has, in particular has stalled so much and continually not addressed the issues that people have asked them to address or a majority of the members? That's the question of the year. That they're not holding her accountable at all and they're just painting this picture like everything is fine. Um, I think part of it is poor skill set. I think they don't know how to deal with the issue um, and perhaps need uh, a tougher a tougher chairman and they need to make the decision of what they're going to do. I mean people got up and we had that one meeting people got up and spoke two petitions read um, multiple comment from parents, teachers, and one of the board members spoke for, uh, I'm going to say it was like 15 minutes on drones that we do not have in the school system. I think some of them probably have had positive experiences. Positive experience in the district or Dr. Roy. Maybe they have a lot of friends with positive experiences in the district or Dr. Roy. Uh, there's something compelling them. You know, again, I used to think that um, that you know, reasonable people can get together and talk about it and sort of figure out what the problem is. I just, I don't see um, the board as a unified entity right now. It almost seems highly politicized around supporting Dr. Ross. I think there's a couple of things at, at play there. I think, uh, one, we have two board members who are, are not afraid to address the issues, uh, Samantha Mannion and Amy Tozo. I think the other six, or I guess it'd be six board members now, are pretty much in the pocket of the superintendent, and they rubber stamp every decision that she made makes uh, without much thought or discussion. Uh, so I, I think the board is slightly split on that. I think the other factor here is that uh, some of the other board members of the, the six realize what the issue is as far as the superintendent, but I think they're. Uh, afraid of the, the financial repercussions if they try to do something to remove her. No comment about two petitions and public comment. 15 minutes, uh, there, there's a huge disparity in, in what's being handled and what is not being handled. They've been told by the town, they've been told by the teachers, um, and they just don't listen. And I think sometimes they forget that we voted them in to act on our best interest and our, in our, on our behalf. And they just seem to have forgotten that because we've spoken. The town has spoken. The teachers have spoken. And we've said point blank, we want Dr. Roy gone. And the board has still not done that. We have problems that are not being addressed. And this board, uh, they're not looking at the problems with clear eyes. And, and that's the point. You're completely inverse on budgeting for, for non-payroll. So, to Wes's point, it, it looks as if you're elevating the payroll to cover non-payroll items that you feel that might not necessarily have been approved, but then getting them so then you're just moving the money over from payroll. That's what it looks like. I'm not saying that that's the case. It is I'm not. saying that's what it looks like. People think that the 
payroll portion of the Board of Education budget's fixed. So we aren't going to play with it. Somebody's playing with it. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm befuddled why you would have a blank, basically a blank evaluation. There's no way she can win back the community at all. She's just, she's caused too much damage to fix. When two -thirds, over two-thirds of the teachers in the district give a vote of no confidence in the person driving the ship, it's time to find a new captain. We need new leadership, and I've said this at the, the board meetings on multiple occasions. I don't take any pleasure in, in saying that, but it's time for a new superintendent, somebody who can come in and work with the community, the teachers, and the, uh, the students. And I, if you've watched the board meetings or, or attended them, I think it's clear that Dr. Roy has lost the trust of the parents. She's lost, certainly lost the trust of the teachers. And I think to a great extent, the trust of the students. I do think the students have been failed on, on multiple levels. Um, and then unfortunately, I think the damage is so great at this point that I, I really don't think Alicia can recover from it. Now at this point, I don't think there's anything she can do to fix this. Um, she claims to be, um, you know, for the students and acting in the best interest of, of the town and the students. And if she really were, she would do the right thing and step down immediately. One, I think, at minimum, the BOE needs to speak to the public, not at the public. It's always, you know, you should be grateful for what we've done or I just want you to know we're listening to you, but you're not because the same thing is happening every single week. Every single meeting, it's the same, it's the same meeting over and over and over. It's like Groundhog Day. Um, you acknowledging, they've never even acknowledged there's a problem. There has never been an acknowledgement of we understand there's a communication issue, we understand we have a teacher. They've never even acknowledged that. And this is a year down the road of, you know, hard-hitting, fully loaded BOE meetings. A lot of people think this is a Democrat and Republican issue. I probably voted Republican more times than I voted Democrat. I can't think of any, any more worthwhile cause to invest time and energy and effort in trying to get the districts right. It's just the most important thing that we can do as a community is educate our kids well. When you see people who don't know each other railing against each other on Facebook and you see comments on the News Time site and you see people screaming at each other uh, from the podium, it's just, it's gotten to a place where it's out of control and there's people that are, are forming completely divergent opinions in town. People who talk to each other for years are now not, and have known each other and been friendly are not because of some of the divisiveness that this has brought on. It's funny, I asked Dr. Roy, I said, for the good of the town, I think that she should leave. And at some point in time, you have to, we have to end this divisiveness and unify around finding the right solution. The right solution doesn't seem to involve Dr. Roy at this point in time. I understand also the fiscal constraints related to her departure and the necessary buying out of her contract to the tune of approximately $600,000 from what I've heard through the grapevine, but someone needs to find that money and get her out of there because frankly, she's just kept tanking the school system. The bottom line is that she's doing the same thing as superintendent, but on a larger scale that she did as an administrator, which she shouldn't have been in the first place. Uh, I think the board needs to figure out how to do things right. I think they need to end the dysfunction. They have to come together in some way, shape, or form. I think 
that if they don't get rid of Dr. Roy, that they have to support her. She, she's challenged when it comes to communicating with, with the community, and frankly, she's missing out on a whole bunch of social cues. If teacher morale is bad, then it's going to impact in the classroom. It's going to affect the kids in the district. I think that she's fully capitulated her opportunity in New Fairfield. Yeah, you have to remember, she has no trust in the teaching community right now. How do you, these are the, the people that work for her and with her day in and day out. She doesn't have their trust. I'm not sure how, how she can survive. We're facing an awful lot of problems in front of us. I don't think that she can stand. I don't think she can stay around. I did share a peace offering with Steve, uh, staff last week at the Celebration of Excellence. Makeshift, homemade, so get ready. <laughs> I'm kind of warning you. All right, it's my magical, personified olive branch. No one's a branch in my backyard, I get it, but let's just work with this. So I want to share the message behind this. That's what's important. Because if I had to make one wish today, I wouldn't wish for anything material or anything that would amount to more than just having people who can look at each other and say, we want to work together. We want this to be a better district. And I know we can do that. And that's what I would wish for. I know I need some magic. I know that I also need to listen, so I took these ears from the internet, they're not mine, from the internet, they're mine, they're not mine, but they are very large, and then you can't maybe see here, but they're very, very small lips, so that I make sure that I listen more than I speak. I know that's very important right now. With Thank you.